events that led up to when he met Shrek, and does Puss in Boots have the start of his own lucrative franchise? Hello there to everyone, and thank you once again for tuning in to my favorite spot online, and that would be the website realscreenreviews.com. I am, of course, movie critic Nick Yakabuchi, and our next movie review is the 3D animated adventure Puss in Boots. This family-friendly feature opened on Friday, October 28, 2011, and it stars the voice talents of Antonio Banderas, Selma Hayek, Zach Galifianakis, and Academy Award winner Billy Bob Thornton. This film comes to us from director Chris Miller, the previous director of Shrek the Third. He now takes the reins on a story filled with an already beloved character, and can the addition of big adventure, big laughs, and three dimensions start another juggernaut series? This tale tells of the legend, the myth, the lover, the fighter, the outlaw, the... I think that's it. That would be Puss in Boots, the sword-wielding, debonair, Zorro-like hero. What a coincidence that he is voiced once again by Zorro himself, Antonio Banderas. And joining him again as the second half of the most beautiful couple south of the border is Selma Hayek as the feisty Kitty Southpaws. Now together they will join forces with the engineer of this elaborate plan, Humpty Dumpty, and they will set out to save their town in a tale where legends are made. Well, people, I have always thought that since making his appearance in the second Shrek film, Puss in Boots could easily hold his own film, and I was right. Not a moment too soon, our swashbuckling feline makes his debut in his own family-friendly adventure, and once again the creators of our wonderful Green Ogre seem to throw as many jokes out there for the adults as they do for the little ones. This movie is extremely entertaining and never tries to be anything but fun, and it all comes in a nice 90-minute package. The best compliment that I can pay to the film Puss in Boots is that it never takes itself serious enough to ever get bored with it. The filmmakers follow the proven formula of taking beloved characters from your favorite nursery rhymes and or fairy tales and throws them smack dab into a storybook filled with everything that is Spanish and muy macho. I have read that some other critics have kind of trashed this film and I can only wonder what their expectations could have possibly been going in because I think that this is perfect family entertainment and pretty much hits the mark all the way through. Now I will also say that not since Disney's Tangled has a feature really embraced the 3D technology like Puss in Boots has. This feature is beautifully shot with scenes of action that are nothing short of magical. It is bright and boisterous in color, flair, and enjoyment. I will say that it, does, it doesn't, excuse me, it doesn't strive or break any records when it comes to the department of originality, but the movie is above average throughout. However, one important part is that Puss in Boots does attain where a lot of family films fail is that it's smart enough to balance adult intelligence and wit at the same time delivering happy, fun, and silly amusement for the very young in the audience. I think that they made the correct choice for a spin-off character from this franchise too. I don't know if I could handle Donkey at the forefront of an entire 90-minute feature, and that didn't fare too well for Mater and Cars too. The film just clips right along because Puss is an engaging enough hero and he's almost impossible to not like. He can deliver jokes and kick some major behind, and through all of this he still manages to keep his cool even while dancing the flamenco. At 90 minutes, Puss in Boots never worries about trying to be too deep on plot line or strong on story, but it never really needs to. Banderas shines, especially in the scenes with Hayek, and I don't know if it's just me, but they're hot, even when they're animated, they still ignite the screen. I was glad that even though it still encompasses the feel of the Shrek films, it breaks away more than enough to create its own core and original story. It relished in the aura of Zorro, or say the classics like The Magnificent Seven, or The Adventures of Robin Hood with Errol Flynn. All in all, I would say that this was much better of a film than either of the last two Shrek features, and I would recommend this as a family film, a date movie, a good comedy, or just a plain old good time at the theater. Though not perfect, I will gladly give this first Puss in Boots movie a very solid three stars out of four. And remember, people, I'm not always right, but only when it comes to the movies. And thank you for your attention. One destiny, my name, would become legend. <laughs> DreamWorks Puss in Boots.